Let us begin with this stotra. Tavo katham ritam Tattu jivanam Kavi bhiriritam Kalma shapaham Shravana mangalam Sri madatatam Bhuvi gnanti e Last week we were reading and discussing about the wonderful experiences of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. He practiced different paths and through his absolutely pure and concentrated mind realized the truth of those paths within very short time. Sometimes some people, they say, how it is possible? We are practicing all through our lives, but still we are not getting the realization. How can a person, he is practicing different paths, different religious paths and realizing within a very short period of time. What actually we are going to realize? The truth. How it is possible to realize? By controlling the mind. Absolutely controlling the mind. And what is the mind? Mind is nothing but the flow of different thoughts. And when we can control those different thoughts, is it impossible for anyone to understand the truth, to reach the, the truth? The obviously, when the religious truth we are discussing, we are not discussing about the external thing. So it is totally different. Those who have concentrated their mind, it is not very difficult for them to understand the truth of one path. If you go through the book that we have published, Many Ways to God, at the back of it we have given a, a one in one page a table where all the religious paths and their practices have been discussed. Only those practices if you go through, you will wonder the Muslim, the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Christians and Jews, all their practices are all the same. All of them they are fasting, all of them they are visiting the holy places and all of them they are practicing almost all common things. The if all those practices are same, the result is supposed to be the same. If I am doing the same type of work, same type of practice, result is supposed to be the same. In different place, in different time, in different situation, by different people, it doesn't matter. If I practice the same things, the same result will come. That is very easy. And similarly, Bhagavan Siddham Krishna, and here we are speaking about the spiritual truth and the spiritual truth is not external it is internal it's to the mind and when mind is completely under control of a person he can understand that truth in any way so this Sri Ramakrishna did no doubt about it some people they are raising question not understanding how the spiritual practices go what is the main thing in the spiritual practice? It is not the, the temple or the mosque or the church or the synagogue. It is the human mind. And human mind is nothing but the thoughts. And thoughts generates from the external things. If I can control that, why not? So Bhagavan Buddha say, if a person can conquer the whole world, but cannot conquer his mind, I would say no, he is not a hero. Hero is he who can control his own mind. It's very difficult. 
and that is why the Sri Ramakrishna is really, really peerless. He is not having any that competitor in this line. He was really excellent. He practiced and then he said, after experiencing the different methods, he declared, why should I be one-sided? This is a very wonderful statement. Why should I be one-sided? The most of the people, even the teachers, spiritual teachers, they always teach one method and this is the only thing and you should not learn anything. And some of the teachers, they go so far to tell, don't go to any other place, don't mix with any other, don't listen to anything. Only this much you should know and you should proceed. Why? This is the question. That's because we are afraid. We are afraid that some, if I allow my followers to go to other places, mix with others, then I may lose them. That is the fear. But in Hinduism, in the true Hinduism, the thing is like that. You can go to any path, you can follow any path, you are going to reach to the same goal, same result, but the name of those results are totally different. Some will be say that is a Buddha, a Jehovah, a God, Allah, Ishwara, different. So Sri Ramakrishna said like that, and in Hinduism, you know, always we discuss about two very important words for the development of the spiritual knowledge. Two things we must try to understand. One is Maya. Maya is the elusive power of God. Another is Ahamkara. Ahamkara is the delusive power of the individual self. It's called ego. So because of these two, ego is nothing but the maya in short form, in individual form, and maya is big. The Hinduism teaches this whole world is nothing but deceptive images of that maya. Now a self-controlled person can only understand it and can become free from the bondage of permanent and temporary, good and bad. What is good and what is bad? All temporary. The moment you say one, the conception of two comes. So how to deny that? This is an excellent conception in the Hinduism. They will never say one even, they will say Advaita, absence of two. Absence of two means that. The moment you say one, conception of two comes. So this type of very subtle and the questions are come. And then Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he says, it is very difficult to break the elusive bondage of Maya. In different places he is telling which act as an individual in the ego as an Ahamkara. Hence we hear the Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna say, and this is very, very important for those who are sincere seeker of spirituality. You know, some of the people, there's an ego always within our mind. And we satisfy that ego in different ways. Even sometimes we will find a person who is telling the two teams are playing. And someone will say, oh, team A is going to win. And perchance, by chance, team A win. Then he will say, I told that team A will win. According to the situation, according to the, the play that the players could perform, they have won that game, but this man will take the credit, I too. As if, because of his telling, they were having the success. Not like that. But still the ego is so. In every respect you will find this, this ego. So to come out of the ego is very, very difficult. 
and to go to the spiritual path much more difficult a person who is not having any connection in the religion suddenly they will listen to some of the lectures and they will go and boast among the friends when they are discussing oh i heard that lecture have you heard that well i will forward that lecture i understood him yeah this is very good i am an intelligent person and i am understanding him so that much is the religion for that person is very subtle friends it is truly truly very subtle way that our ego that acts so we have to be very careful now here bhagwan sri ramakrishna is telling one must inherit good tendencies to realize god i must repeat this is so important statement one must inherit good tendencies to realize god those who are not caring about realizing god only for the intellectual the the game this for them is okay but those who are truly interested to realize god must be very very careful why inheriting the good qualities one must have done something some form of tapasya austerity either in this life or in another those who have truly tried to achieve those they will only inherit those good qualities and then only it is possible for them to realize god understand god understand the truth and to go beyond the bondage of maya i must remind you the maya is very very strong why it is the power of god the god's power he is deluding us now we have to fight against that how it is possible so the god himself has come forward to help us and in the 16th chapter of the bhagavad gita in three verses he has enlisted all the good qualities in one place so that the people should try to follow those achieve those cultivate those good qualities just good qualities and the beginning he said the 16 chapter thir- first to third verses first verse he says begin with the word abhayam fearlessness how the abhayam the fearlessness come and the faith in the words of the scripture and guru otherwise fear that fearlessness won't come the people with doubting mind do you think it is all right do you think it is possible they will never be able to achieve anything undoubted faith should be there in the words of the scripture and the guru now what the what is this scripture now in the bhagavatam we find bhayam tatva abamarshanat bhayam tatva abamarshanat you have to uproot the cause of fear how tatva the truth is there what is the truth god alone exists and nothing else that is the truth instead of telling the brahman the atman the all pervading consciousness if we say god it is very easy for us to understand we can conceive that idea god okay the god alone exists and nothing else so in that case if the god alone is existing why should i be afraid of whom i am going to be afraid of what i am going to lose what i am going to gain nothing so the scripture says tat tvamasi in the vedantic scripture they will say you are that you are the god now if i am alone existing then who am i so they will go again sat samsuddhi pure heart this purity of heart means 
we are hiding something within in our thought, expressing something, doing something else, and we are thinking that we are going to realize God, absurd, is very clear. Now, question is, am I interested to realize God? Or, as the Bhagavan Krishna said, I am loving God or worshipping God or going to the temple just to satisfy some of my desires. Then the question is separate. So I am not so much interested to get realization and get mukti from the bondage of birth and death, but I am interested to get some relief from some of the problems that I am having. Okay, that is a different path. That is a different way. You can, of course, you can go to God, you can pray, you have every right. But those who are thinking that they should realize God for them. And this is so important. Majority of us, millions and millions of human beings, different forms of religion we are practicing and practicing with so much of vitality, with so much of force. And we are so engrossed in it that if someone says in the name of religion you have to go and kill, we are ready to do that, thinking God will be happy, not utilizing our brain. Who has created this universe? God. Now what I am going to destroy? The creation of God. And God will be happy. How it is possible? Absurd. God has created this universe. He has created bad people, good people, animals, birds, reptiles, human beings, different forms of languages, different forms of worship. Who am I to go criticize? If I try to follow one path that is sufficient for me, I, I will do that. Why should I criticize others? And forget about destroying are causing difficulties for them. No, it is not possible. If I do that, God will be angry. So this is the thing we have to understand. So here he says, Avayam Satta Samsuddhi Mind should be hard, should be pure. Bhagavan Sri Ram Krishna in his Bengali language he said, Mon Muk Akkara Whatever you are telling and whatever you are thinking should be one. Today morning we were discussing that in the lunch time. We were discussing that. If you look at the Asian countries, almost all of them, they are having some hypocrisy. Why? They will say something, they will think something, they will do something. Why? about very, very re religious minded people and still then they are doing it. Why you know? Because of the historical and social background. Particularly I can speak about India. India was ruled for 700 years, long years by the Islamic rulers and 200 years by the Britishers. You can imagine a subdued people and when they are going and standing before some other type of people who are the rulers, we cannot express the truth before them. Can we go and stand before Hitler and say, hey, you are making the wrong thing? That will be the last word I will speak because immediately I will be killed. Who will go and do that? Europe has tested this. And India has tested for nine long hundred years. So obviously it has become automatic in, in our system. So hypocrisy almost in the blood they say, but it is not the fault because of the situation. Slowly it is taking turn. After the independence, the new children they are coming, those who were born in the open, independent India, they are becoming free. They cannot think of hiding something and telling something. 
as we find in America, they don't hide and they don't say something like that. Majority of them in this way. So this is Sapta Samsuddhi in the spiritual life. You should not say something just to pacify some of the devotees, some rich people are coming to satisfy them. Sometimes we go and say something just false, just to satisfy them, to get some good donation from them. And it's the spiritual life. No, that cannot be. So Sri Ramakrishna, only one sentence he said, one must inherit good tendencies to realize God. And how the tendencies will come? These first three words of all the 26 qualities, the first three words are Daiva Sampad. And some of the ex explanation that we find, they say that this first three words, what is that? Abhayam. Then second, Satta Samsuddhi, purification of the heart. Then third is Jnana Yoga Vyavasthiti. Jnana is steady in knowledge and yoga. Very steady. What is the knowledge? Knowledge is I am not this body and mind. I am something else. What is this something? That is the self. That is the Atman. And that is nothing but the part of the Paramatman. The consciousness. Now this very moment I cannot think of beyond this body and mind. And as because my mind is associated with this body and mind, now obviously in the environment, in the system I am leaving, I am connected with that. And the family that I say, oh they are my families and these and they are all connected with this body and mind. But it is not true. The truth is something else because I am that consciousness and that consciousness has created a sense within my mind, I. And when I understand that, after reading the holy books, particularly the Vedantic books, then I must stick to that. So jnana, then yoga. What is the yoga? Practice. I read, I understood and then I have to practice, otherwise I won't be able to. And what is how it is possible to practice? In every day-to-day -day life, I must practice. So this abhayam, fearlessness, saptasam suddhi, the truthfulness in the heart, in thought and also in the speeches and action, same it should be. And then jnana yoga vavastiti. I heard some people, they are telling, I was in Himalaya for 12 years, then I saw my past birth. It is not necessary to impress some of the devotees he was going on telling. Why should I? Unnecessarily, it is not true. If you had already understood that, you would not have come over here. Another gentleman came, a Swami, oh, I live very humble way, you know, my heart is so small, when I leave inside the room, my legs are outside my room, it is so small room. I told, who is it? Then why you are here in America, touring all parts of America? How could you come? Only coming over here means you have to spend nearly 75 or 80 thousand rupees in India. With that, you could make a big room at least for you. <laughs> Unnecessarily. So this is Satya Samsuddhi. Only to make some you know, impression among the devotees. I am so humble, I am so this, I am so that. Why? You are not that. So this is unnecessarily we are doing. So Satya Samsuddhi. But whole life he has spent for religion. Unfortunate. Whole life this person has spent for religion. But not practicing what one should practice. Then it comes from there, here, very easy a person can do dhanam, charity. So this is really, really very important. Majority of the people, though they are having the money, but still they are so close-faced 
they don't like to, they can give. And when they pass away, that money will be left over here. May most of the time, there is no one. So the bank, wherever they have kept it, they get that whole money. But still they cannot give it for the good cause. So in every religion, jakat in Islam they say, and donation, that say in the Christianity, dhanam in our Hinduism, see the same practice. Why? I have earned, now I am giving it. That means my ahamkara, my ego, which is making me attached to all this, are breaking. So this dhanam, this is very, very important. And daiva sampad, charity. Dhamam cha, cha is an, control of the senses. The control of the senses we practice. We practice austerity. How? Not eating food or drinking water for whole day. Majority of the people in almost in all religious sects and faiths, they practice this. Now today my, my fast, I am doing it. All other people are eating. And the lady has cooked, lady is serving. But at the same time, she won't take a morsel of food. Tremendous control of the senses. By this way, Damamcha, control of the senses, Yajnacha, performing good work without expecting any result. That is called Yajna. The Yajna, you know that there is a beautiful story in Mahabharata. When the Yudhishthira, he was performing a great Yajna after vanquishing his opponents and conquering the whole land, he made a good big yajna, ashrami, the yajna. And after everything was over, suddenly the one, what is it called? When the, what is that? Mongoose, yeah. The mongoose came. And very peculiarly, the mongoose was having half part of the mongoose is golden. Another half, normal. It came and rolled over there where they have given a lot of things in charity. And one person noticed it. And for the story's sake, we can take it for granted. The mongoose could speak in the, the language of the human being. So the gentleman asked, hey, what you are doing? The mongoose said, I wanted to see which sacrifice is better, good. Look at me, the half part of my body is golden. And because I rolled over there where there was a yajna, a sacrifice, and here also I rolled, but look at it, it has not transformed. The half part again is normal. So I cannot say that this is the best than that. And what was that? From where he got the golden, half golden body? A poor Brahmin, after fasting for seven days, not getting a morsel of food, when the Brahmin and his wife and his two children, they got a little portion of food and after offering to God when they sat to eat, a one atiti, one guest came and told, I am hungry. Then the father, the Brahmin, he gave his part and said, well, I know that without this food, I will die, but I must give it because this is my religion to help the hungry people. So he gave. The wife told, that is not sufficient. As a wife, this is my duty to support your cause. So she also gave her food. Children also joined in that. So all the four, they gave their portion, the whole food they, they gave to that particular guest and the four of them they passed away they died and that atiti was none other than the dharma himself the god of the righteousness himself so over there this mongoose it went and rolled and got this half portion golden and it said from then onwards i am going to every place wherever they are performing the yajnas the sacrifices and try to understand, 
are they truly doing it for the good of others? For the doing it for the good of others. That is called Yankya. This Yankya is performing good work. But the good of others, of course, and without expecting any result. And that is called Yankya. Then comes Swadhyaya. Swadhyaya is reading of the holy book with an attentive mind. Sometimes we read the book casually. No, that won't do. Some people, they say, I am reading Gita. And he is reading only the English rendering. Try to understand that. It's, to some extent, it's of course good. But if he wants to understand the Bhagavad Gita, you have to understand every word of it. Then only you will understand the true meaning of it. So this, from the Gita that we are quoting, Avayam, the fearlessness. The fearlessness, where from it comes? There are so many people, they are fearless. They will go and face in the war. The D-Day they were performing the other day. I was seeing those, the retired elderly people. After so many years, they went over there to see the place of their glory. And they came down over there on the sea beach without caring for the bullet that was spraying from by the Germans. So D-Day, they are so courageous. Hundreds were laying down their lives and another hundreds again they crossed their dead bodies to face this. Very courageous. But here it is not that courage. Here this courage means avoid fearlessness. I am not going to die. But not in that type of war. But in understanding as because I am the self. Not the body and mind. So I am eternal. And from that, the fearlessness comes. So this is the avayam. And then comes swadhyaya. And where from we, I will learn? I will learn from the scripture. And when I am reading the scripture, one must be very, very attentive. The, one day, I had to read some portion of the Quran in our Belut not in one function. So as because Bhagavan Sri Krishna practice all paths, so we also respect all the religious paths. And in the birthday of Bhagavan Sri Krishna that we celebrate, all the religious scriptures are read with great honor. Right from the Bible and the Tripita and the Quran, etc. So I got that opportunity to read a few pages from the Quran. So I went to purchase the Quran and so that I can read it. And when I entered into the shop and asked for the Quran, then the, some people were sitting over there, they told, hey, you are a Hindu. Why are you are asking for the Quran? You know how to read the Quran? There are so many systems. You have to sit like this, you have to be and after that, before that, you should wash your hand. And these, these so many systems are there. You don't know that. How can you purchase the Quran and read it? But the shopkeeper, an elderly person, he told, see, they are very genuine type of people. When they will read, they will read truly with great attention and love and respect. And you people are only going over and never opening the pages, reading and understanding the import of the scripture. So he sold the book to me. I could read, I could perform, etc. Now this, you have to be very, very attentive when you are reading a scripture. The Upanishad. This weekend we are going to have a very good uh, uh, scriptural class with Swami Sarvadevananda and he will be describing from the Upanishad. Suppose we go, we listen, we just because in the company and then we forget. That is one type. But if you go with the book with a pen in your hand and then noting down what he is telling, asking the question to clarify your doubts, 
that will go within your mind and that is called Swadhyay. And very attentively you are understanding and then this is called Swadhyay. And next comes Tapa, the austerity. What is this austerity? Ma Sarada Muni Devi, in a very simple sentence she said, Austerity means keeping the mind in the presence of God. Somehow you have to keep the mind in the presence of God. So sometimes people are taking the name of God. Sometimes they are singing some devotional bhajans. Sometimes they are chanting. Sometimes they are reading the scripture. Somehow they are keeping their mind. And then when we are working, if we can remember that we are actually serving the Divine Personality in this form. The God has come to me in this form. I am a teacher, I am teaching in the classroom. But the children that are sitting before me, they are nothing but the God I am giving them. This education, God has come to me in this form. And that is called austerity, tapa. This tapa doesn't mean only physical. In the Bhagavad Gita again, the tapa has controlling the tongue. One should not speak harsh words, even on the, the temptation. Some people are going on telling bad words and then I feel like also retaliating. No, I must control myself. That is tapasya. Some people are insulting me, did something wrong to me. I can take revenge, but I won't do that. So that is called tapasya. So physical, mental, and your, the thoughts, speeches, so many tapasyas. And here say austerity. Then come arjabam, uprightness. The very upright, very straight. I am doing, going to do this. And I am not going to mix it up with anything. So very straightforward. So this is Arjavam. I we have accepted an ideology of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, Masharada, Shami Vivekananda. Now Shami Vivekananda said that you should not mix with the politics. Because being a monk, I cannot favor. I cannot do any favorism, even the good people. Even then, I cannot do that. Samadrishtitva, that we have to make. But in the politics means either you are supporting A and denouncing B. So you cannot do that, you should not do that. Once we have accepted this ideology of Vivekananda, we are living in his organization and suddenly out of emotion, we should not go and cast vote. No. That is called uprightness. So many of the people, they cannot control that. The sometimes the emotion, things comes up and then they go out and do it. Not knowing actually what they are doing. Being, having the garb of a monk and accepting the oath of same-sightedness. If you are going and casting vote in favor of some group, actually you are breaking the vow of sannyasa. So this is called uprightness. One must be very alert and decisive. No, once I have taken the oath, I am not going to break it. So this is called uprightness and ahimsa, non-injury, satyam, the truth. This truth means we have to continue with the thing that has happened. Ultimately, the truth is nothing but the God. But in the practical life also there is some truth. And we know the great stories of this truth. The father of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. Just because he didn't tell one lie, he had to give up all his property in overnight and go out with his family without knowing where he is going. The challenge he took. Not only he, his wife also supported. Even if we die on the street, it's okay. But we are not going to take the support of the falsehood. So this is called Ahimsa. 
and satyam. This satyam we find the truthfulness. Who can practice it? Very upright. Who can practice it? Who is decisive? Now I am not going to say anything because that will be false, wrong. But again, sometimes in our scripture also, it says for the safety of others, for the sake of others. Sometimes if you tell the lies, that is truth. But that's in a special cases. As we find that Sri Krishna, he is asking Yudhishthira to tell the lie that he has killed the son of an Acharya, Drona. So, but that was a pure lie. But still the God was asking to tell that to save the life of the thousands of people. So that is the different special cases. But in regular practice, we must try to tell the truth. But when we are telling the truth, we should keep in mind harsh truth we should not say. The truth that may hurt that person, we should not say that. And we should put that in such a way that will be beneficial for him or her, not hurting. So that is the way satyam, then akrodh or absence of anger. When the anger comes, anger is actually a reaction. Action is the desire. When the desire is not fulfilled, then only the anger comes. Anger is not the action, it is only the result of it, it is the reaction. The action is our desire. When the desire is not fulfilled, we become very angry. So we have to understand this. The moment I am angry, there are many questions we see. The devotees will be asking, people will be asking, I am very, even the children, class 8, 9 grade, Students, they are coming, I am very angry, how to control the anger? I always say, can you write down why you are angry? If you can write down point by point, well, this is the reason I am angry, I am angry, you will find most of the, and almost all of the points will be, I didn't get that, so I was angry. He didn't listen to me, so I was angry. So anger is only a reaction of unsatisfied desire. Then the Tyaga, renunciation. What is the actual renunciation? Ahamkara, the ego. When I give it to God, that is the best way. I am the son of God, I am the daughter of God. Whatever I am doing, because my father, my mother wants it. And that way only we can do the best renunciation. Otherwise, there's a confusion is there. Some people, they give up their heart and home and they become the monastics. That is a different type of mental condition. And because of the Hindus, they believe of the past karma, they develop that and they feel a strong urge to leave their heart and home. That is one thing. But majority of us, we can do in this way. Those who are in the household, we can always say, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is teaching, I am the son of God. I am the daughter of God. We are the children of God. So whatever we are doing, I, I do it at the behest of the God. That is also a great renunciation. I do it as best as possible, but at the same time, I don't hanker for the credit of that work. I just do it. That is a perfect renunciation. If one can do that, he will also get the same result as one is leaving the heart and home the same way. The moment we can do that, what will be the result? If you give up the ego, if you can lay the ego at the feet of your God, tranquility, shanti. So the after the Tyaga comes shanti. And then comes apuishunam. We feel so much 
to criticize others. Almost in every step, in everything, we have so many things to tell about others. Oh, you know that he can't speak in this way. You know that he can't do stand in this way. He can do this way, that way. Almost for every one, we have some word or other to criticize. And that is very, very, that's why mother stressed on this quality. If you want, want the shanti, the peace, don't criticize others. If you want. So this is also always we say, if we don't want the peace, of course we have the right to criticize others and fight with others. So this apoishunam, daya bhuteshu, compassion to the beings. The compassion is a love. And when I feel oneness, then only the compassion comes, otherwise not. Sometimes when we read the story, that the, how the people you know, beating others, killing others, cheating others, the tears comes in the eyes, compassion. And what we can do? We cannot go over there physically to stop it. We cannot go and stop all these atrocities that are happening over the whole of the whole world, what we can do? We can come and pray to God. God, I saw that, I noticed that, I heard and learned. They are suffering. Please bless them so they let them be happy. That is also compassion. Just I am feeling and doing nothing is not compassion. The compassion means you have the feeling, you have your heart, you can understand. There's someone, you know, there's some emotional things that we do. That is not compassion. Compassion is a true love for that being who is suffering. And if I can somehow go out and help, it's okay. Or I should pray. You know, sometimes some people, they say, you know, the, I received a letter, email letter, someone, one lady is writing, my father took some loan for our education and he kept his, I think he sold his property or the land or kept the whole land in mortgage. Now he is not having money to get it back. It's a very difficult situation and his loan is going on increasing. He took only 15 lakhs and now it has gone to 16, 60 lakhs. So it is so difficult. Can you please help us? And she is writing, if you give $2,000, that will be sufficient. I felt like sending. But then the problem is, I do not know whether it is genuine or not. I do not know where to send and all that. So this is the, then I prayed to God. I don't know whether she is telling the truth or not. Sometimes it always happens. So this compassion means always you have to, when you feel for others, either you should go forward to support them, help them, or at least pray for them. As the mothers, they always do for their children. Aluluktam, uncovetuousness, and unaffected by the senses. Aluluktam. Then Mardavam, gentleness. The one of our Swami, he was the general secretary, Madhavananda Ji. Afterwards, he became the president of our Shangha. He used to say, first become a gentleman, then become a monk. He used to tell the monks. Who is a gentleman? Who can control his senses? In different situations, the temptation comes, then sometimes some people will shout and he will use the abusive words and his body language will be totally different. Why? If you don't have the control over your senses, how do you think that you will be able to realize God? But that is called that one in the 26, the good qualities, the one is the Mardava, gentleness. He's firm, he's decisive, but at the same time, he is very gentle. The way of gentleness, because of this, Ri, Ri is the modesty, will never take any credit. Modesty doesn't mean, oh, I don't know, I cannot, 
not like that. We are expecting that it should be given to me, the responsibility should be given to me. But at the same time, oh, I do not know, can I do it? I Not like that. This form, confident, he will say, well, well I will do it. If you give me, I will try my best to do it. But at the same time, not eager to get the credit of, from this. So that is called greed, the modesty. And this achapalam, and constantly changing the mind, the flickering mind. Ah, today I am here, next day I am there. Ah, let me go and stay with them for some time. How they are? That way you won't be able to develop the spiritual life. So this achapalam, chapalata, all the time flickering mind. No, you cannot. Once I have taken the decision, I have, I have taken the decision. I am going to go through this. Before accepting the ideology, I must try to understand, try to realize whether this is good for me or not. But once I take the decision, I continue with that. And then it comes the age of the boldness. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, if anyone comes on your path in your, and become the hindrance for your spiritual growth, just push him aside and go forward. But that is, that boldness should be there. Otherwise, oh, some people are coming and crying and, this, and then I cannot become a monk. He won't be able to become a monk. That boldness should be there. And forgiveness. This is the Shama. Who can forgive? Who has the power to forgive? I myself is in the, in the receiving end. How can I forgive others? No. Only the powerful who could take the revenge, but won't do that, even with the complete understanding. That is called the Shama. The one Swami Vivekananda was traveling with the European ladies and the other gentlemen. He was going to the great pilgrimage in the Kashmir. And you know, the, when reaching over this, it is on the high hilltop and it takes long days walk. So they'll be camping in different places. Vivekananda also camped. Some of the, the monks, not understanding the, what is Swami Vivekananda, they were cutting jokes and abusive languages they were using as because he was traveling with the European ladies. The ladies were all great. But these people, they don't understand. So they were. The Vivekananda became angry. He was about to come out of his tent. Then an elderly monk came, stood before him and said, they do not know who you are, but you know who you are. Vivekananda is the Shiva himself. They were going to have the darshan of the Shiva in that cave. And they were insulting the Shiva himself in the human form, Swami Vivekananda. So this is the Kshama, forgiveness. Immediately he forgave them. Driti, fortitude. And Shochan, the purity. Adro, absence of hatred. Na Utimanita, absence of pride. It's not the self-confidence, it's the pride, absence of pride. Friends, today we only read one line from Bhagavan Sri Ram Krishna, and that is one must inherit good tendencies to realize God. These are the good tendencies and they are divine tendencies. And if we realize we want to realize God, we must try to acquire, develop these good qualities. The first three qualities of I am. That fearlessness, sattva samsuddhi, purity of heart, and jnana yoga vavasthiti. These are the three. Some of the exponents they are telling, this is actually, these three are the daiva sampad, the divine qualities. Sri Ramakrishna is telling, either in the past birth or in this birth, you must develop these if you are really sincere, serious, to realize God and 
that we should try. Thank you very much. Let us complete this with this chanting. Offering the pranam, our respect at the feet of Bhagavan Sri Ram Krishna. Niranjanam Nityam Anantarupam Bhaktanakampa Dhrita Vigraham Vai Ishavataram Paramesha Mityam Tam Rama Krishnam Shirasanamama Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsa Sri Rama Krishna Arvanamastur